As Steve uh, almost mentioned, I uh, uh, was first aware of this over coffee uh, with him probably last winter when it was just a glint in his eye, and it's really cool to see it coming together today. Our next guest is Dalen Harrison, the CEO of NSequence. Since co-founding the company in 2000, Dalen has led the organization as it climbed from a promising startup to one of the leaders in interactive video software and services. NSequence is currently powering TV experiences in 20 million digital homes around the world. NSequence developed the Major League Baseball Mosaic application, which allows viewers to simultaneously view six games at a time at once on a home screen. That project is a two-time Emmy finalist for outstanding achievement in interactive television. Last month, the company announced its first ever satellite-synchronized interactive voting and polling application for NBC Universal's Bravo network. This interactive application allows Dish Network viewers of Top Chef 3 Miami to vote, view facts, commentary, and trivia questions with a click of the remote. All of this is synchronized to each episode. Recently, NSequence teamed with Wyden and Kennedy to produce an interactive television component for Nike's Zoom campaign. We'll hear more about that really cool uh, application later at our panel, interactive TV panel at four. Right now, please join me in welcoming Dalen Harrison. Hi, everybody. Am I on here? Hi, everybody. Uh, it's good to be here, and I'm excited to tell you a little bit about interactive television and sequence and what we're doing. But just before we get started, can I just see, uh, in this audience, how many of you are more on the creative side of everything? You've been on the creative side of everything. All right, so it's a big, big number. How many of you have been involved with interactive television at all in your past experience? Okay, now I know who the skeptics in the room will be. Um, it's been very tough, as you know. And Sequence is a, a seven-year-old company founded in 2000 um, by a group of people here in Portland, actually, who were interested in um, taking it to the next step and felt, in fact, that interactive television had been, until that time, an effort for engineers only. In fact, that's the case. Every interactive television application that has ever gone to air prior to the last couple of years has ultimately, the creative certainly involved, has ultimately been an engineering effort at the bottom line. I can remember the first interactive application I ever did called CNN at Work. I was working at Intel at the time. We got it all finished, and the creatives the day before goes, okay, we have a whole new look and feel. And we're like, <clears throat> wow, impossible. Uh, you know, we just got finished with six months' worth of testing on this C++ application. <laughs> you know, that, and, and it was impossible. We could not make the modifications in time. What we discovered was the creatives had lots of changes all the time as it evolved, and we thought about new things to do. And so interactive television to date has been this big engineering task. And what we're going to talk about today is the future of television is going to change because for the first time, truthfully, one of the big things, and there's more to it than this, but one of the big things is for the first time, creatives with creative tools can control, develop, and deploy interactive television on digital television, on mobile phones, in broadband, um, and any digital device that can play video, in fact, you can do interactive television for the first time and do the complex things that typically took engineering teams to do. And that's really going to be a sea change for the industry. So what we're going to talk about today is um, interactive television everywhere and what's going to happen, we believe, in the next 10 years. <clears throat> so obviously, let's talk about the industry for a minute. The 30-second the spot is being challenged. Um, the, the value of that, in the last, even in the last month, as the commercial ratings has co have come online, uh, there's been networks who have had uh, 13 to 15 percent degradation in ratings as they watch, uh, as the certain demographics turn away during the commercials. And we've already had the Tebow effect. I think everybody's well aware of that. Um, the skipping of commercials is a big deal. We're going to talk about how interactive television comes in and unbelievably, in some cases, uh, uh, allows the creative, uh, creative 
producers of a show to keep people on channel even through the commercial break in interesting ways. Um, there's new pressure for new revenues. There's nothing like television for a mass market. Nothing compares to television as, as, as being able to hold a mass market. And also, um, if you look at the other things that are happening, we'll talk about the fact that video is the center of everything that's happening even on the internet and other places. That video becomes the center of this entertainment. What would you want to make interactive or where would you want to touch the consumer, allow them to respond and connect? It's with the great video content that's out there. So, um, and then consumers finally are demanding more. And bottom line of this is that um, we believe that the consumer experience is what matters the most. In fact, the, uh, the Emmy Award winning uh, uh, finalist that we're, we're doing right now um, for Major League Baseball, controlling your baseball experience. Nobody but a super hyper baseball fan would be interested in that. But it's for a super hyper baseball fan, it does everything. You can create your own mosaics. You, you link every player. You're watching a different game, but Derek Jeter, it comes up on one, one screen. He's up to bat. It, you'll get an alert. You can click on it, jump to that video. All the videos are interconnected completely. And so what's happening is the consumer experience for the, what the consumer is interested in is becoming far greater. You look at a TiVo today, and TiVo is basically a glorified VCR or the DVR category where you can fast forward, rewind through content. What Interactive is bringing to those experiences today is, is allowing those, those DVRs to be better than a DVD experience. Uh, find your content out of order. Um, categorize them in new ways. Bring new interactive experiences to the DVR that are actually really increase the value of the advertising on a DVR. So um, the, statement, uh, the statement of belief today is that in three to five years, TV as we know it will be unrecognizable. Now, for the skeptics in the room who have done any kind of interactive television before, I would, I would be right there with you in saying, this, we've heard this all before. Come on, you've got to be kidding me. Um, interactive television has always been quirky, uh, didn't work right, you needed extra thing, or you didn't have the right box, um, all this other stuff happening. In the US, right now, um, there are about 30 million uh, U.S. homes who are enabled with interactive te television and cable operators for the first time are deploying for the first time on their old set-top boxes, not waiting for some future thing to happen, um, new specifications, new upgrades that allow interactive across all their cable platforms. I'm talking back to their oldest, worst box now can be interactive. And what we're talking about for the first time this next year, there will be over 45 million addressable digital homes in the United States from a single authoring environment that works on your current remote control with your current set-top box, just works, enables programming to be interactive across that platform. That's never happened ever before in any marketplace uh, in the world to that extent across operators. And so when we, we go through this today, I'm just uh, going to highlight these things and we'll show you some demos as well, all right? So um, the, in the climate of the business also, what we're seeing is Television networks are, are um, amazingly under pressure to come up with new business ideas. In a recent, in a recent conference, uh, I heard Beth Comstock say this, I have a bounty on my back to deliver $2 billion of revenue uh, in digital and revenue by 2009. Interactive television is the holy grail. Because where else? As we know, all know, we saw the website stuff, and websites are great, and I'm not against websites at all. Um, really important. But the truth of the matter is, when net television networks send people to websites, they lose more money than they make off that proposition. You take them off your core content, you lose a bunch of, you know, there's, there's a lot of problematic things with it. So what we're talking about today is, is allow television networks and your video content be interactive and keep that consumer engaged in the interactive where the interactive is, where the video is, excuse me. So everything is going interactive from a device point of view, the expectation of the consumer that everything is going interactive and those things all are going to uh, have video. Um, the different devices uh, on the different platforms all have the ability to be interactive in two-way. And so interactive television today is, is, is broadening its definition. In fact, in the Emmy Awards in two weeks in L.A., the category that we were nominated for uh, for best interactive service um, includes interactive websites and other devices uh, simultaneously. So, it, so what, the, what the Academy is recognizing as an example is that television now is on multiple devices. This mobile phone in my pocket right now, interactively, I can do all the, with our software on it, I can do everything I can do with the TiVo. Store stuff, record it, play it back, cut out clips, 
um, with my mobile phone. Today you can see streaming video in some of the, these, these uh, newer services that are out there. But it's, what's coming is personalize your video via the mobile phone, for example. If we had more time today, we'd go through some of those uh, in more detail. So interactive television is a broad category across these multiple platforms. It's the only way to still, uh, or it's, television is still the, the way to reach a mass audience. And it's a place where, if you can, it's far more valuable for the content community to re reach that audience while they're watching their programming. Um, we talked about DVR penetration already. Um, uh, predictability of ratings, what needs to be come, come to here as well, what's happening with interactive television. In fact, when you see the Nike ad I'm going to show you today, and we'll show Top Chef, and I, if we have time, I'll show baseball and some other things. Um, the reality is, is all those things are metered just as, uh, you know, like a website would be, and now uh, content providers are going to have ways to meter, track, have direct response and direct results right off the television screen uh, when people are, are working with their remote control and going interactive. So just to be clear about how complicated, because one of the things that comes up, there's always confusion afterwards. People go like, I had to buy a PC and install it. And my, no. Uh, this is, you see an interactive button come up on screen. Uh, a trigger comes up. So you're watching your show. And this is actually showing our HP ad that ran in the UK. Just to talk about results, one quarter UK homes went in and spent four minutes on this ad in the first 30 days. This stuff works. The consumer sees it on a popular ad. They click just the OK button. 90% of all the things that you would do are just the center OK button or select, depending on what your remote control says, and the four arrow keys. Of course, if you enter zip code to find your local dealership or those kinds of things, uh, you would press other keys. But 90% of it is really working with those five, five center keys. Very, very simple. With your current remote control, with your current set-top box, that's what we're talking about. And um, so that's a sea change in, in, in what's happening. So let me go to a couple demos and show you what's happening uh, as example with, uh, with Nike. And um, this is, um, let me hook up the sound here. Uh, this is live now, so you see the Nike Zoom campaign and you can go into this and there's four kind of menu items here. This is on your DVR on the Dish Network. It's the first interactive ad campaign that links into over 22 minutes of content that's stored on your DVR. And then you can click through to this and see LT's various moves. And um, he has these famous spin moves. And you can go through and watch them. You can go through and watch him describe them and talk about so when to use this Thomason, move. Um, my signature move is a spin move. The best time to use a spin move is usually when a defender is overplaying you, when he's coming in on a tackle. So but he's for the fan, again. Fast. This is obviously for the fan who, who, enjoy, who, who has something to, uh, and knows who LT is, comes in, he can explain a bunch of things, how he uses them, different him. games. Uh, we come into the, uh, back to the main menu. Uh, you go training with LT. And by the this way, we work with the creators at Widening jumps. Kennedy who are just fantastic just down here in the street. There might be a couple of you in the room too. Um, and I, it's cut off here, but you can see the different, um, the different training moves. And of course, it focuses on the new shoe that they're selling. And uh, LT talks about how he trains, how he, how he gets fit, how he, he, he thinks about uh, speed is critical. This is and um, really again, this is an application that the creators, we gave them complete you know, openness to do whatever you want within the confines of what's possible on the platform. Um, you know, and our tools allow the safety. creators, as you're developing these, these kind of applications, really to think about um, what's possible on the platform so that you can, in a single authoring environment, say, yeah, I want to use this advanced stuff on this platform, but if I have a low-end cable box, yeah, I know that I can do the same things just without the same kind of maybe uh, high-quality graphics or whatever. So from a single tool environment, it allows the publishing across the tens of millions of homes. Uh, come back to this. We also have a game. So it's about quick quickness. So this qu is quickness of how fast you are with your remote control. This game is how fast can you press the remote control buttons. And I'm not very fast at this, but it's how fast you, know, you can be quick too is basically the, the message of this, um, of this game. And uh, go back to the main menu and then, of course, focus on the shoe, focus on the product. Um, and uh, there's more about the shoe. More information comes up on the shoe when you go into it. The shoe kind of explodes and comes apart and shows you the elements of the shoe. And then there's a store locator. Uh, we can read in a set-top box. Uh, most of the time, we can just read the zip code already in the box that's stored by the operator. So we can localize where your local um, uh, store would be. And of course, this case, it's, uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, um, I'm not doing that. But you can, we can localize and find your local store and display your local store. Um, and we've done it with car dealerships. Um, we can, in fact, 
uh, check inventory. Uh, we've scheduled test drives before that you enter your zip code. And if you're in the right city that's doing home test drives, it'll go into a different menu and say, hey, let's schedule a test drive tomorrow for this car, this color, and we'll bring it by at 4 o'clock. Is this your, still your address? You don't you need to enter any of that in. We already know that because of the digital set-top box. So um, these, for, in terms of effectiveness, I wish I could talk about, I am not allowed to talk about uh, my customers' um, results. I got to tell you, they're very, very good. In fact, it's, I think they're record-breaking results. Uh, well, when you see the next one, uh, what we're seeing as well, uh, and Bravo, uh, when working with Bravo, and I'll bring that up right now, is that the more consumers know it's there, the more they go back to see it's there. And that's why it's, you know, good practices are really important here. If, we, if you do, uh, you know, if it's the same thing all the time, of course, you know, the consumers will go away. But uh, Top Chef, and this one, next one I'll bring up, we're seeing better and better results every week. And I can tell you, uh, double-digit percentages of audience participation is happening. Uh, so let's go into this one. And this Top Chef one is actually very interesting. Uh, you know, this is one where um, they came to us two weeks before the show went live. And I'll just let this kind of run a little bit in the background. There's a lot of extra things, but I'm not going to play with it because it, it, this is a synchronized to the video show, answer questions during the show and so forth. And they came to us two weeks before the show went live. We got it to air synch completely synchronized to, to, the sh uh, to the live showing. And there's play along, Q&A. Every week it changes up kind of what you do. Every week the ratings uh, of, of the interactively, more and more people have participated in those. Th that's gone up to really impressive numbers as well, which I'm not allowed to talk about because it's their internal numbers that they're studying and, and, and what works and what doesn't. We're tracking all that. Um, but in this case, the creatives of the show said, yeah, we're okay with making it interactive, but we do not want any overlays that we put in the video when we post-produce this video. We don't want interactive ever to be on top of our stuff. And so there's a lot of interactive that comes up during this video. Um, and so we synchronize the interactive never to, 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 to interfere with that. And uh, the, the consumer can always choose to go full screen as you see this going through this. Uh, through a, a full dense show, it's getting more and more dense as well as we've added different things and, and playing along with this. This has been a real success for them. And this is an example of something that has been produced with two people, synchronized to the show two weeks before it went live on air. Now, that, if, those of you in the room who lifted your hand and said, I have worked in the interactive before, that has never been possible ever. Bottom line, anywhere in the world, even on Sky, where you know, um, Rupert has been doing this for a long, long time. And so for the first time, you can enhance your show, start to bring people in, add sponsorship. I think you saw some sponsorship there. And sponsorship's important. On interactive shows in the UK, we're, we're doing about 36 networks, 24 by 7 right now. All the MTV networks in the UK are running interactively. In sequence doesn't even know what they're doing. We just, we've licensed them our products. They're, they're making it interactive on their own. And we're seeing on certain enhanced shows, when you enhance it and keep the video there, people stay interactive 14 minutes on the hour on average. If you have a brand showing up there, you can't buy enough 30-second spots for that kind of display time on screen. And so that's really exciting. So there's a lot of interesting business models that come, come into play here.